Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today, I'm gonna answer the question, can a cell phone control traffic lights? This is a question that in my previous video of Flipper controlling traffic lights, that question was asked several times in the comments, and it was actually a very good question. Cell phones are very common. Everybody has one. Some people have more than one, and uh, Flipper is actually kind of hard to get. Now, there were some other uh, people posting like, well, I could do that with a 555. And yeah, you could, but the timing is, you will see, we're going to get into the timing uh, a little bit more in depth uh, today. Uh, there are some uh, things to be aware of. Uh, the more updated systems are looking not just for the 14 hertz, but actually 14.035 hertz and uh, eight two and a half second frame rate. So that's something else. It's not actually a continuous signal. There's actually a, a frame rate. So we'll get into that momentarily. But the question, you know the answer to the question. I, I always give you guys the answers you want to hear. Yes, it can be done. And we will basically be using the exact same circuitry that we were using with Flipper, but we're going to make a little add-on that's going to allow you to connect your phone to the same device. And we're going to start first. When I was doing research, I came across this site, Firestrobe 2000. And uh, it's quite an old site. It's probably from the year 2000, going by those graphics. But that's okay. He's quite helpful. Um, basically, they're selling a sensor that will work with Opticom uh, type transmitters. Uh, their sensor is sold to gated communities. It senses the 14.035 and will open the gate for emergency vehicles automatically. Uh, that's really great. So we go to the kit. And there's their control board and there's their sensor, but right down here there's an app for testing it. Hmm, that is interesting. Not only for Android, but also for iPhone. And uh, it says these phone apps will allow testing of the Firestrobe 2000 by holding your flashing phone. It must be uh, held to the photo eye assembly during the test phase, and it must be approximately six feet. So it has about a six foot range because it's just a small light on your phone. But what if we were to interface with that light on your phone and use a higher power infrared transmitter? Well, that's where we're gonna go with this. And here's the actual app. It's quite sophisticated and it allows you to do a lot of cool things, patterns. As you can see there, you can set up delays, that not only is going to allow us to be precisely on 14.035, but we can put in that frame rate that we need, which is two and a half seconds. And uh, this pattern here can also be put into, oh, there was a way to run it as a loop. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, pretty cool app, actually. You can do a lot with something like this. Uh, so we're going to get on to the next video, and I'm going to show you how we're going to interface with this app. And any phone that uh, has a light on it, can this, this will work. Okay, guys. See you in the next uh, installment. So now that we're going to try to do this with a cell phone, how do we interface with the cell phone? How do we couple to that strobe on the cell phone? Because... As the uh, site said, it only had about a six foot range from the Opticom sensor. Well, here's a really simple way of doing it and you actually probably already have the component you're gonna need to do this. Remember I said that light sensor on the array, which was right there. Remove that, keep the jumper on the back. Here it is here and I, have wired it just as just as a demonstration that red LED is representing the LED inside the opto coupler. Now, this guy over here is sensitive to light. You see that that LED is coming on a little bit when I point them up towards the light at the ceiling. 
Hmm, and this is a very simple circuit, three volt battery. I'm not using any resistors because uh, it is only three volts. We have enough resistance and we actually, we want this to be operating as a switch. We don't want anything in between. We want it to basically go on and off. So we're gonna drive it into what we call saturation. And I'll just get, hook him on there. Okay, now we get the phone app going here. The strobe ability. There it is. And as you see, I have it programmed. And what's nice about this is we can program this very precisely. 14.035 hertz is the actual frequency that they use. Even though there's some tolerance, but doesn't hurt to be bang on. Um, the other thing I found was there's a framing that they like to use, which is about uh, two and a half seconds. So I'm putting a two and a half hertz uh, pulse or, or basically a spacing in between. And when I start running the loop, you will see, run loop, there we go, I see it now. Look at that. Now doesn't that look more like what's on, uh, on the police car? So we bring that over. And if we couple that, there we go. Get them right on there. There it is, it's lined right up. And we are coupling, optically coupling, using that light sensor. And that red LED is going to be basically these two wires on the original circuit going to the same circuit back there. And that's all there is to it. And you'll be able to use your cell phone with this Mo uh, Strobility app, which is quite, quite amazing actually, look at that. As long as your phone has a light on it that you can control, you can couple with the light sensor from one of the uh, security infrared arrays. Yep, that's what I'm using there. Okay. So what I've done is I found this black plastic cap and it's actually a cap um, used on, you know, like cable TV splitters and antenna connectors. Uh, it's a cap for the F style connector. Seems to be the perfect size, and I'm just sliding that inside just like that. Look how beautiful that looks. So, what I'm gonna attach it to the phone is just with some 3M tape like this, and I made a hole in the center for the light, and basically we're just gonna do that. And, uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. You can probably come up with your own uh, ideas on how to attach it to your phone. Um, you could maybe use a suction cup or Velcro or who knows what, but this is just for testing right now and I think that'll do the trick. Yep, okay. I like that, that looks pretty good. <laughs> okay guys. Okay guys, check this out. We have the complete circuit built and up and running. And there it is, the cell phone optical coupler. And that is built with uh, the photo transistor from the LED array, which we already had and we weren't even using. So the LED arrays out of a camera uh, have two functionalities. One of them, it's giving you the infrared LEDs. And the other one is that photo transistor can actually be removed and used in this fashion, uh, very simple photo transistor wired in series with a three volt battery. And from there, it just connects to the same two wires that uh, Flipper was providing the signal from with the original in the original video. Uh, same battery pack, same optocoupler, everything identical over here. I paralleled up this other uh, infrared array 
Uh, and as you can see, not all the LEDs are working on it. it uh, some of them look really dark. Looks like they've burned out. Uh, obviously, it was from a very high hour camera. And uh, yeah, so interesting too, you'll notice that uh, one of them is more invisible, harder to see. Different wavelength of infrared. That's what's actually happening here. And let's do this. Go in macro. We'll focus on them. Yeah, there we go. Okay, guys. So now you can see that actually works. <laughs> we are doing everything from this app. I like this app because it locks so you can't accidentally you do that and you can get back into the app. Whoops, do like that. There we go. And I like this. You can do this too. Where is it on the screen? Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> now anybody that is epileptic needs to not watch this video because uh, yeah, we're dealing with frequencies here that can trigger seizures. So be warned. <laughs> I had a few comments in the other video that people felt woozy after watching the video. So anyways, uh, yeah, be careful if you're epileptic. Don't watch my videos. And uh, yeah, that's kind of, that is really psychedelic. Holy crap. It's making me crazy looking at that. <laughs> so there we go. And uh, we can stop there. We stop the loop. And then we start the loop and then it starts up again. Yep, stop. And then start again. Okay, so there you have it. Now you know how to use a cell phone to simulate an Opticom uh, transmitter. Not only that, we can do anything with it because it's, you know, we got control. Look at, look at that. We can put the precise frequency in. You could adjust that to 10 hertz too and pretend you're a, a municipal, uh, you know, the bus. <laughs> uh, apparently, yeah, the buses use the system too. It's a lower priority, obviously, but it just tells the traffic light that the bus is there. And sometimes I guess they get a more uh, faster grain. Okay, guys. So there you have it.